every now and again, everyone's talking about something and you feel that you haven't got involved enough and you, you just need a crash course in it you, so that you can handle small talk in the weekend or in the back of a taxi or at a dinner party or wherever you might be in the pub. So we've done it with politics and sport. Today we're doing small talk television. Felicity Cross is deputy TV editor at The Sun. I could think of no one better that, uh, to have in studio this morning. Felicity, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. There's so much going on on television now. The yeah. one that's really, the really reason why I wanted you in yeah. because at the weekend when I bump into people and they say, have you seen, have you seen um, The Traitors? This is Claudia Winkleman leading the, the vanguard of that. And while I did see the first episode of season two, I still need you to, to help me. Yeah. So that I, to equip me. Yeah. So I can be socially acceptable when okay. I'm having a pint. What is it? Who's in it? And why is it? Okay, Go. perfect. I can help you here. Oh, excellent. So uh, it's very simple premise is essentially wink murder. Oh. We all know how that works. Someone is secretly the murderer. You have to find out who. Great. So that's basically all you need to know about the traitors in a nutshell. But obviously there's many, many layers to it. So they're all in this gorgeous castle up in Scotland. Yes. Claudia's presiding over the action. At the very beginning of the series, Claudia secretly chooses who the traitors are. So we, the viewers, know who they are, but nobody else does. The rest of the cast are the faithfuls. Yes. And it's the faithfuls' job to try and work out who the traitors are. So the only clues that they have essentially is human behaviour. Yes. And then every night the traitors murder... Yes. Obviously, quote unquote. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Metaphorical, yes. Um, one of the faithful. And then every episode sees them have these round table discussions in this spooky castle where they're essentially grilling each other, trying to work out who's cracking under pressure, who acted strangely, what their motives are, what the theories could be. So it all sounds like it's quite complicated. No, no, you've sold it really well. In fact, so much so that I want to go home and watch episode oh, two. Oh, great. Well, what I find really interesting about it is the way the BBC cast it, they're just incredibly normal people. This isn't yeah. your sort of, you know, Love Island, Kardashian-style fame seekers. It's yes. it's a mum. It's it, people with their own original faces. Yes. yes. Who, who Exactly. Very important to be able to see their expressions. Yeah, it's so unusual in this day. And I got, they're, they're actually their human lips. I can't believe yeah. it. But, but yeah. it's amazing to see how these people People completely crack under pressure, the way that people try and lie and get wrapped up in their own lies and trip mm. over. Yes. So psychological that, warfare, Felicity. You're watching this. Incredibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the psychological warfare is what makes it so interesting yeah. and what really captivates viewers. And that's what The Traitors has really done. And when you're watching it, do you find yourself drawn to some of the characters, good or bad? You kind of yes. go, I like this guy or yeah. she's great or that's the devil it's himself. A hundred percent. So one of The Traitors this year is a guy called Paul yeah. and he's incredibly good game player. He has gone in there with a strategy and he is just absolutely smashing it, you admire him. I'm, I'm getting no, admiration from you. For me, I'm so torn because I can admire what he's doing as a game player, okay. but as a human, I hate oh, him. Oh, God. Oh, that's uh, how, how are you doing this to poor Diane? How could you say that to Molly? So yeah. so, so you're torn as a viewer. So you're invested. Wanting, you want the traitors to win because they're playing such a good game. Yeah. But then you're also desperate for the faithful, the good guys yeah. to win. So it's just pulling on all those human yeah, emotions. You want fairness to win in the end. Yes. Yeah, and decency and goodness. Yeah. Um, and it's just so incredibly well done. There are some missions which bring things to life a little yeah. bit to try and raise the prize pot. Um, it's just beautifully shot. I've been to that castle in Scotland. Have you? Yeah. It looks it's pretty just, on the TV, yeah. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. We all want to go to Inverness now to go visit. Yeah. Um, so you're you're not too late to tune in. Yes. So there's been four episodes so far. Oh, okay. Um, so you're not too late. There's 12 in the run. So get involved. I'm, I'm already involved. You, you have brought me to the castle. I feel like I'm, I'm in one of the rooms looking yeah. at them. And it's it's on the player. It's all there. So you yeah, can catch yeah. up really it's easily. It's all on the BBC I play it. And it, and. The, I think the other thing that's really important about Traitors is BBC have looked at this and they're recognising this is a TV event. Yeah. So we're back to that water cooler telly. For sure. So they're not putting it all on iPlayer to start with, which is quite often the trend these days. They are airing it three nights a week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, which means everybody was desperate for Wednesday to come around this oh, week. I love it. It's four. old school TV where exactly. you have to... You have to 
you just have to stop binging just gently watch it and, yeah. and actually look forward to it yeah. uh, you know, that's great and the audience has responded so well to that so the figures when you look at them people are waiting to watch it yeah. and not catching up on iPlayer that's great um, and, and the figures are just astonishing for, for telly in this day and age sitting down and watching it live um, it's amazing it's sort of a return to that old school as I say water cooler moment people, I, I think people love watching something together even if it's online, the communal experience of being able to say, well, you, you know, it's too late tomorrow because yeah. we're all here together now watching yeah. it and giving out or commenting. About it. And Claudia, honourable mention, of course, to Claudia Winkham. And yeah. who, she carries it really well, doesn't she? Yeah, uh, fantastic. Very dry, very witty. Yeah. She's not doing this kind of jazz hands no. entertainment style. No, the tone is She's right. perfect. Um, Mr. Bates versus The Postman. I'm jumping ahead because it is extraordinary that a t- a television drama can move into the political sphere so much so that the CB was returned by the former CEO yeah. that that uh, government policy is changing and uh, in a nutshell the story because it is a political story but it's it's quite straightforward in some ways and yet it's so awful yeah uh, but it but it took TV and a drama exactly. that. this is your this is your wheelhouse yeah, yeah. exactly and I, th- I think the thing that everyone is saying here is this isn't a new story there's been yeah, you yeah. know very talented journalists you know this is this is an issue that's been dug into and investigated for years now mm. but it's humanizing it that's right that's a very good point and that's how it's it's captivated everyone and yeah. that's why it's made such a difference yes. um, and I think another astonishing thing that's happened is um, pretty much unheard of ITV at Air airing it again on terrestrial okay. so if you missed it on january the first they are airing it again on monday so it's on every single night next week um mm. because it's such an important piece of tv that has done such incredible work and and in in, in brief the, these post offices all around the country were getting on fine they got a new computer system uh which started had a glitch in the system so all these postmasters were being told there's money missing from your account you owe us the post office the, the Royal Mail whoever uh, X amount of tens of thousands of pounds and yeah. they're saying well we didn't take it and they destroyed people's lives it took years and years and years for them to get some sort of compensation and along comes this TV show and it's, yeah. it's, it's wonderful fair play e- to all no absolutely and I think again it's 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 bringing together those real stories and that's what the TV programme's done you know essentially this is a story of, of money and fraud yeah. um, and, and a tech cover-up. system gone wrong yeah. um, but the way that it's told through the impact to the people mm. you know people took their own lives because of this yeah, it's, awful. it's devastating and like, it's absolutely fantastic that finally justice has been served yeah really extraordinary yeah. and uh, and the importance of good TV uh, strangely absolutely um, what are you excited about in 2024 oh, there's gosh. so much I mean yeah. we're, we're talking about crime TV and that's the stuff we like here so give us yeah. a sense of where you're at with that yep so, so I heard you speaking before with Bernadette about Fool Me Once and yes. that's been a really great example but another one which I really enjoyed over Christmas and you can watch on catch up is, is the castaways so this was done by channel five done. um and was a adaption of a crime thriller by lucy clark and um it's the story it stars sheridan smith it's the story of two sisters um and a very mixed history between them but one of them is in a plane crash and it's the second sister's search for the truth about what happened in this plane Ooh. crash and the twists happen right up until oh, the I love last that. page okay great it's beautiful it's shot in Fiji um, so I definitely recommend catching up on that one um, more coming up there's Jenna Coleman uh, she's wonderful very yes. good in this sort of thing um, she stars as a police detective in a drama coming up called Jetty okay. um, so that basically is hooked on a podcast journalist investigating a cold case and how Jenna as a real detective is drawn into that so that's going to be a really good one Life, uh, art imitating life imitating art it's, it's going full circle there yeah, anything definitely. else jumping out at you, at you is that... so entertainment TV wise yes. now the guilty pleasures as you might want to call them but they're so important, I think, for January telly watching. I agree. Dancing on Ice is back this Sunday. Some really great cast this year. Go on. Ricky Hatton. Oh, yeah, okay. You might not expect him to be good on the ice, but apparently he's all right. You wouldn't think a fella like yeah. that bulky, yeah. But Eddie the Eagle. Oh, old school. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Remember him first time round, but yes, yeah. okay. Um, so that's going to be great. Um, Love Island, probably not your cup of tea. How, would you, how dare you judge me <laughs> like that, Felicity? 
<laughs> You've known me six and a half minutes and already just looking at me, you know, might not be. Do you know what I say about it, though? Obviously, my, my daughters love it. And, and I think if it brings joy to, to someone's world, I will not knock it. Yeah. That's what I well, think. You know, the reason I mention it is because uh, it's the All Stars series. Oh. So it's bringing back Islanders from the last 10 series. Well, look at. Well, I so always, you might even recognize some well, of them. Sorry, Maura Higgins uh, is of somebody. Course. Yeah, of course. And she is actually a lovely human being. I've met and interviewed her several times. Ooh. And she, I love what she did after a stint on the island. She made a whole career for herself. Oh, she made a few quid along yeah. the way. She's got her own style. She's sassy. She's brave. She yeah. doesn't take any prisoners. Fair play. Yeah, Greg absolutely. O'Shea, another nice fella too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then one that you might be interested in, Gladiators, is back. <laughs> so the BBC are rebooting it. It's back on Saturday. Now, you see, that's where we're going to fall out over that because Gladiator 2 with Paul Meskell, the, based on the Russell Crowe film, oh. that's more my bag. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you're talking about the old show from yeah, back in the day. Yeah, with the Travelator and the Pugil Sticks. <laughs> that's, um, that's good, that's good. It's just family fun, isn't it? And you need it. You yeah. need it. Felicity, I've, I've loved talking to you. Small, oh, talk te- small, small talk television today with Felicity Cross, our guest. Uh, Felicity being the deputy TV editor at The Sun. You sold it so well. I, I feel like my dance card is full of things to watch. So thank you for your, for your time. No problem. And nice to talk to you this morning. We'll have more along those lines as the weeks go by. Virgin Radio.